Hi, my name's Josh Stanish, and I'm here at the Federation of Fly Fishing uh, Museum in Livingston, Montana, and I'm going to be tying a sow bug imitation that I use around on a lot of the tailwater fisheries here in Montana. Um, we'll start off, uh, we're going to use a scud hook. Um, I prefer to use the Timco uh, 2457, um, but I also, a lot of times, will use the Dairiki 135. Um, I'm basically tying this in a size 12 today. Um, I primarily tie this in 14s and 16s and even down to 18s. The 12s uh, on the larger size, which works really well when you have real high water when the dams um, are spitting out a lot of sow bugs because of high water, um, like on the Missouri or the Bighorn when the flows get really big in the spring. Uh, this is a great pattern. So um, it's primarily a tailwater fishery in, uh, insect, but you do find them in some of our freestone rivers. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, typically, I use a black UTC thread. Um, I've got gray here today. I uh, ran out of black, so I'm going to substitute with gray. Um, I like the black usually because it'll kind of shine through this dubbing that we're going to use. Um, and a lot of the sow bugs that you'll see in the river um, <clears throat> are going to have a lot of black coloration into them as well as being gray. So um, we just start off with attaching our thread here. Um, I get it right at the front, and then we'll wrap and make a nice base of thread right over top of the hook. And we'll get it all the way to the back. And once we get to the back, um, then you can, um, sow bugs do have a little tail on them. Um, usually when I'm tying these to use in the summer commercially and when I'm doing a lot of them, I don't do the tail. Um, the tail will pretty it up a little bit and add a little flavor to it, but it's definitely not something that needs to be on there for this fly to work well. Um, for the tail, I usually use a little mallard flank feather. Um, and this is, it's just got a nice black and white barring to it, which you'll see on the sow bugs when you get them out of the river. So we'll just take, and we're gonna take a little piece here, and trim that off, and we'll just take this mallard flank and we're gonna tie it right off the back. I don't like to do as long as a tail as you do on like a little mayfly imitation. Um, so I keep it fairly short because their tails aren't real pronounced on a sow bug if you are gonna add the tail. So we'll go ahead and use a pinch wrap method to secure that on top of the hook. Sometimes it'll slip over the back and a lot of times you can just force it back around onto the top. And then we'll just trim off this excess here. And I like to make a couple extra wraps just to really secure that down. Now our next step is we're going to put a little shell back. Um, and that when you see sow bugs in the river, um, you'll see if you really take a close inspection on them, they do have a very prominent black stripe down their back. So I like to get some sort of a black stripe on their back just to kind of imitate that. And what we're using here today is just a, this holographic tinsel, um, which is made, you can get it from most of the manufacturers um, and you'll find it in almost all the fly shops. And this is the medium size, so, and it's in black, gives it a little bit of sparkle, which especially in high water will help the fish to find your fly a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and tie that right on in the back. And then get your tent, your back out of the way here. I use a little material spring. And just keep that out of the way. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use this little tool, which is called a dubbit tool. Um, and the dubbit tool is, is great for doing all kinds of different dubbing work. Um, and basically what you're going to do is you're going to take and make another loop and come right back to your hook and attach it. Wrap forward a few wraps on your thread and then wrap right back over the top of those to secure it in place. Then you'll notice the loop is kind of open right next to the hook down here. So what we want to do is kind of close that off. So you just take your thread, throw it right over the top and come right back to your hook. And then that'll close that down so that it's nice and tight right there so you can slide this dubbing up into it. Now once you get your loop in there, you take this dubbit tool, and it's kind of W-shaped here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert the bottom end of that W right in to keep our loop open. This will allow us to insert our dubbing in here and then spin it around. Now this dubbing I'm using is kind of a home blend. Um, it actually came from a guy, Dave Freeman, uh, who was from Missouri that used to live here in Montana. Um, he kind of introduced this and we tie a scud with this for the Spring Creeks. It's been popular for 25 years. Um, but this is a great dubbing. Um, I blend it up myself. The only place I know commercially to get this is a company out of Billings called Yellowstone Fly Goods. Um, they do sell it um, to fly shops and you can probably get your local retailer to find it for you. So um, this is the gray sow bug color. Um, and this is basically just kind of some carpet fiber dubbing. Um, and it's got a lot of sparkle like Antron has in it. Um, and it's, you want to try and get a pack that has fairly short fibers. If you get real long fibers, it's hard for it to spin up. So what we're going to do is get back to our loop, 
then spin our thread around it here. And we're just going to take, and I like to clump up this dubbing into a nice tight clump so I can pull out little pieces of it. And what we're going to do is just pull off small little bits of it here, and you insert it right in the loop on the thread and slide it right up to the top. And that'll kind of hold it in place for you. On a size 12 like this, it's going to take five or six clumps of this dubbing. On a 14, it's about four clumps. On the 16, it's about three and about two clumps for an 18. Um, and, and it'll vary each time you do it because you're not going to, you want to try and get a fairly level clump here. Um, and this is one case where you can actually use more dubbing than you might need to because you can trim it out and it's not going to be an issue. Um, we'll slide up our five clumps in here. We'll get all those in there. Now all you do is you take this dubbit tool and it's nice because it's got a nice axis it'll spin and we just keep spinning this up and what it's going to do is basically make a chenille for us and make it real spiky so that these fibers will stick out to give us that representation of that flat sow bug and you want to just spin it up good and tight and you want to see all those fibers where that thread really locks them in place because what we're going to do is wrap this and then we'll be able to trim this up to give us our nice flat shape like a sow bug has when I get towards the end I come in and just give a little push on the thread and that'll help us to make sure all that stuff gets secured in there. Usually I like to put a pair of hackle pliers on here um, so that you can wrap this nice and easy. Um, we forgot the hackle pliers today, so we're going to do it by hand here. You just want to go all the way to the back here, and you're going to wrap one wrap right next to the other and try and make a nice even body as you come forward. As you start going, you'll see some of the fibers want to stick forward. I just pull those back out of the way every once in a while as I make my wraps forward here, just to make sure I get that dubbing nice and kind of compacted up next to one wrap next to the other. And we'll work this all the way up towards the front. Like I said earlier, you can use a little, this is one case with using dubbing that you can use too much of it and still get away with it. Because when you get to the front, all you do is you're going to wrap right over top of your little rope of dubbing, make a couple secure wraps, pull it back out of the way. Then you can come in and if there's excess dubbing up here on the rest of your loop that's still here, you can just go ahead and trim it and it's not going to hurt you because you want this fly to be real scraggly and have a whole bunch of stuff sticking out on it. After you get to this point, I like to make just one little half hitch here just to secure our thread because we're going to pick out all this material here to make our nice body. And you're going to have a lot of this stuff fall out. I like to use just a little piece of Velcro here um, to help pick this out. And all I'm going to do is just kind of scrape on this body to try and get those fibers to stick out on both sides. The reason I half hitch my thread, because every once in a while you'll catch your thread with these loops and these Velcro, and sometimes it'll break off, and rather than have your whole work have to start over, you can just reattach your thread. Once you get it picked out nice, kind of pull it to the side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pull straight down on all this material with our thumb and our first finger. Then you're going to come in and trim it just above where the hook is right where you have the point of the hook. And that usually will give you a nice broad looking sow bug that you'll come in and trim up after we pull the back over. But this will help to get you that nice broad shape. Um, for those of you unfamiliar with a sow bug, it looks like a little roly poly that you might used to might maybe find when you were a kid out on the sidewalk after it rained. Um, but they're flat, unlike a scud where the legs hang down. Uh, sow bug is real broad on its back and then real narrow um, across the top. So we're going to go ahead and pull our flash back over the top here. I like to make a couple wraps on top of it and I like to fold this flash back back over itself and make another wrap. What this is going to do, since it's such a slick material, it'll help to lock that material in place so it won't come out at a later date. Um, and all we're going to do is come in and put a little whip finish on here. I like to do a couple of them in case one of them fails when you're fishing. Just make it, yeah, that one wasn't very good. Get one more here. Nice whip finish on there. 
and then trim this thread off. Trim our flashback. And go ahead and kind of preen your fly once more here. Get everything sticking out to the side. And then you can come and trim off any little loose fibers. Watch your tail on the back there. That's a lot of times why I don't put a tail on because I usually end up trimming it. Then I come in and trim it real flat right up next to the hook on the bottom of it because you want this fly to be pretty flat on its profile if you're looking at holding it like this. And then when you turn it over on its side, you'll get that nice sow bug shape to it, which is you want it real flat and, and very broad on the, uh, when it sticks out on the sides to give it that shape. Then all I do for the last step is I'm going to take a little drop of super glue here, put a little drop right on top. That'll just kind of harden it up a little bit on top and it'll keep that flashback right in place. Then I come in and just kind of scrape that off a little bit. It'll also help to keep your dubbing sticking straight out so it doesn't want to fold down around the hook and look more like a scud. It'll hold its shape a little bit with that little drop of head cement on there. And trim off any of your little loose excess pieces here. And there you have a completed carpet bug or carpet sow bug. It's a great tailwater fly and I hope you all get out and get a chance to use it.